Hi, viewers. Welcome back. My name is Adeola Fayon. It's almost 30 days since President Muhammad Buhari was sworn in as Nigeria's new president. And to help us understand his activities as well as future plans is none other than his special advisor on media and publicity, uh, uh, Mr. Femi Adeshino. Welcome to Sahara TV. Thank you. Yeah. All right. So, um, first of all, a lot of Nigerians have been complaining that it looks like Mr. President has been slow since he was sworn in, that the momentum that he had before the elections uh, have sort of dropped. What do you have to say about this? Well, I would just like to say Nigerians gave um, President Buhari a mandate that you ruled them for four years. And... Uh, they shouldn't then be complaining after less than 30 days. I, I think uh, what they wanted was uh, a miracle worker. But he, he has said it. There's not, going to, there's not going to be any miracle working. There's going to be a lot of work, yes. Hard work meant to bring the change promised. And that change will come. Or it will not come by a sudden flight, it will not come overnight. But surely it will come. So Nigerians need to moderate expectations, particularly vis-a-vis -vis time. They, 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 they wanted somebody that will win the magic wand and every, every law to be cleared. No, it won't happen. This is mm. governance. It will take time, but it will surely happen. I see. Um, so while Nigerians are exercising patience, though, since Mr. President took over power, at least 250 people have been killed by Boko Haram. And people are just wondering, apart from moving the military base to Maiduguri, uh, people are asking what exactly is the game plan regarding defeating Boko Haram? And has there been any update on the Chibo girls? Well, two questions are asked together. Let's separate them. First is an update on the battle against insurgency. I'll tell you that the first two, three weeks that the president spent in office were actually spent in a framework for this battle against insurgency. You will remember that in the very first week in office, he went out to Chad and he also went to Niche. Those were not pleasure trips. They were trips to talk with the president of this country on how they can have a common ground on the battle against Boko Haram. Then the following week, the president of those two countries, Chad and Ije, came to Nigeria. They were joined by the president of the New Republic and the defense minister of Cameroon. Under the auspices of the late Chad Basin Commission, they held a summit in Abuja. And what was it all about? How to tackle Boko Haram in a concerted manner. Now you have a joint uh, multinational task force in place commanded by a Nigerian general, but with the headquarters in Injamina in charge. They are building some infrastructure there now. They are getting ready, armaments getting ready troops. Sometime in July, the move will begin. And when that move begins, it's going to be simultaneous. Nigeria, Chad, Cameroon, Miji will move simultaneously. When I tell you a decisive law will be dealt on, on, on insurgency. So, if Mr. President takes this serious. And don't forget, he also went to G7 in Germany because they had asked him to come so that they can also lend some help. If a good framework has been laid for the battle against insurgency, and I tell you, when it, it begins to bear fruit like this, a lot of people who have been complaining, who have been uh, impatient, will turn around. I see. So the, the military base, them. though, you're saying it won't be moved till July? The one that is very yes, much my think, degree. I, I, yes, I think in Ju July, I think it's from July 21, or thereabouts, that uh, it, will, it, it will be activated. I see July 21, we should expect that. So, but while we're still talking about Boko Haram, a lot of people are wondering when Mr. President would visit the internally displayed, uh, internally displaced people. I'm sure we have at least 1.5 million Nigerians that have been internally displaced, apart from those that escaped to other countries. And in fact, while we're talking about that, June 20th of this month was when, uh, was World uh, refugee day. Refugee so, so, so many day, people yeah. were a bit disappointed, sir, that the pictures that the senior special advisor on media was 
posting on that day was pictures of Mr. President visiting his cows and uh, with his son. How come there was no statement on World uh, Refugee Day and also when will he visit the internally displaced people or Boko Haram, uh, this, I mean, Boko Haram, places where Boko Haram have, have attacked, like in Bono, Maiduguri? Visiting the internally displaced uh, people is a question of are those people neglected or their needs are being met, are they being taken care of? I tell you, they are being taken care of. States are doing their bit, federal government is doing their bit. So visiting is just symbolic. It is not the most important thing on the table now. I'm not saying it's not important, but as long as they, their needs are being met and uh, their welfare is being attended to, uh, there are many things uh, uh, pressing for Mr. President's time. So he, I tell you, is a hands-on person and is tackling as many things as possible at the same time. Okay. Um, I I agree with you that their needs are being met. However, not all of them, because last week we spoke with a journalist that visited some of the IDP internally dis displaced persons, and uh, many of them complained of not having water, electricity, and the, of being in a place that is overcrowded. So, uh, but thank you for answering that question. Uh, my next question, though, is that very recently there was a story that the presidency wants to sell some private jets. And that story has been denied by the presidency. But a lot of Nigerians are wondering, well, is there any plan to sell some of the excess private jets uh, owned by the Nigerian presidency or Mr. President who keep all the private jets that he inherited? Yeah, one thing you can be sure of is when those planes are sold, if they are going to be sold, it is not going to be an under the table deal, nor will it be something done in secrecy. The whole world will know. So if it is something that the president will do, you can be assured that you will get to hear. I see. So, but you don't know yet if he will do that? No. Uh, 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 if he has a plan to do it, it will be announced that he's going to do it. I see. So uh, very recently, there has been a lot of dramas going on at the National Assembly, but it looks like Mr. President has been silent about all that is going on with uh, electing the Senate president and the, the fight at the National Assembly. Is, is there any reason why he's been silent? Silence is not a word I agree with, because silent means to keep mum. But as Mr. President kept mum, I will say no. The very day that happened, June 9, when um, the, the, the two chambers elected their leader, the president issued a statement where he said he has taken notes of those elections and he wished that the process begun by the party had been concluded. He said so. So you can't say he has kept more. That would not be quite right. Okay. And what about the fight that broke out? Yes, as we, as we talk, there are consultations going on. If you look, look at the media reported here that Mr. President met uh, last night with the House of Representatives speaker. So he, the consultation goes on. Don't forget that Mr. President is a member of that party. Mm -hmm. So he cannot be aloof from what is happening within the party. I see. So um, Nigerians appreciate the fact that Mr. President and Vice President have declared their asset, but it's yet to be made public, and people are wondering what needs to take place before this asset declaration would be made public. Yes, there was, there was a press statement on that, and I think that statement still subsists. And what did that press statement say? It said both the President and the Vice President had uh, declared their assets and submitted the form to the Code of Conduct Bureau. And uh, when the Bureau finishes verification of the assets, then instructions will be given on how to make it public. I think that statement still subsists. That is that's still the position. I see. So, um, Mr. President recently fired the entire governing board of NNPC, and people have been asking what's going to happen next. And just so you know, there are rumors that Mr. President wants to be in charge of NNPC himself. We really don't know what is happening. If you don't mind, just enlightening us. No, um, it's within Mr. President's task to fire the board of the NNPC. 
he has done that, relieve them of their duties. And uh, that is just the beginning of the house cleansing he wants to do in the oil, 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 oil sector. If you listen to him since he came to power, he has talked repeatedly of the rocks in the oil sector. Remember, under General Lucia Gonzalez, as head of state in the 70s, he was oil minister for three and a half years. Mm -hmm. So it's a sector he knows. The sector he knows quite well. And now when he sees the rot that pervades that sector now and he compares it with the time he was minister, he knows what exactly to do. And I think relieving members of the board of their duties is just a first step. There's a lot ahead in that sector yet. Okay. So, but uh, we have no idea what the next step would be? Well, he has taken a first step. When you take a first step, you take others. So, as that first step was not taken in secrecy. All the others that will be taken will also not be in secrecy. I see. Uh, being that you are so close to Mr. President, people have been wondering when he would elect ministers. Do you have any information for us on this? Talking of so close to Mr. President, no, I'm one of his personal aides. So uh, if you are a personal aide to somebody else, you can talk to him, he can talk to you, and you can share ideas. We do that. When he is going to appoint the cabinet, appoint, it is prerogative. Sorry. Yeah, it is prerogative. And we respect uh, his decision on that. When he is ready to run with the list, I'm sure he's going to call us and say, no, no, we believe his cabinet list, you know, the procedure is he writes the Senate president. And then the, the list can be made uh, open through the Senate. I see. So recently, Mr. President announced that he's getting rid of checkpoints. It's, there has been mixed reviews, actually. A lot of people have been celebrating that because they believe that the soldiers have been extorting people of money. And also, a lot of people are expressing fear that how about security on the roads? I'm just wondering no. your, your view about this. No, no, no. I think there was uh, a misunderstanding of what Mr. President said. What happened was that uh, during the week, there was a security meeting, and uh, the issue came up. And Mr. President recounted an incident of when he was traveling, and he just saw one soldier uh, who created a long hold-up, and uh, that soldier was just waving vehicles, one after the other, one after the other, one after the other, not checking anything. And he has created a long uh, stretch of traffic. So, Mr. President, said, what then is the essence of that? If you equip that soldier or a policeman manning the checkpoint with the right uh, technological devices, he knows he can detect whoever is carrying anything that is illegal or lawful. For a soldier who stands there, creates that long stretch of traffic, and the general who gets to him and he just moves you past with the finger, serves no useful purpose. So, what he told the chief of defense staff and the chief of officer who were at that meeting was in non essential areas, remove the soldiers from checkpoint. But in essential areas, leave them to continue with their work. But in non essential areas, remove them. That was the instruction. And it was clarified the next day after there was a, a misunderstanding of the earlier instruction. I see. It was not meant to be nationwide. It said in non-essential areas, where its soldiers have just been reduced to traffic wardens. It's very remote. I see. So we should expect them to still be on some roads. That is, that is the instruction. That is the correct interpretation of what he said. For instance, in places in the north, north, north east, for instance, you can remove soldiers from the road. Mm -hmm. And some places with that uh, kidnapping is endemic, Amreva is endemic, you can remove them from the road. What he just said is from non essential duties, using them as traffic wardens, remove those ones. That was the instruction.
I see. I want to talk a little bit about Delta State. There has been numerous witnesses and uh, testimonies providing evidence that the 19th Battalion in Koko military base have been sponsoring mothers, stealing oil, and protecting kidnappers in the area for money. And people are wondering if the presidency uh, is doing anything about this and also what the president is doing about protecting human rights and abuse by the, the police and Nigerian military. I, I, I think I think this question should rather go to spokesman of the defense uh, headquarters in the space of locality. Okay. All right, so I'm, I'm going to move on. Uh, Mr. President recently said he would recover stolen billions of dollars uh, in the next three months. So uh, people have been wondering how exactly this would be. Uh, will the ESCC be involved? And we just want to know more. Yes, all the agencies of government are under the control of Mr. President. Whatever agency he needs, it could be EFCC, it could be ICPC, it could be NIA, it could be anything, it could be police, it could be detectives, it could be anybody, any agency, including individuals that have information, can bring it forward. This information will be verified and uh, they, they will be followed up on. In fact, Mr. President went ahead to say that during the G7 meeting, President Obama promised him that let Nigeria just make the information about these stolen monies possible, uh, available to the United States, and the United States will assist in recovering those funds. I see. Um, um, this next question, I just want to know your reaction to what a lot of young people have been saying on Twitter lately. I'm sure that you've seen many of uh, the, yeah. the messages about your office, as well as that of uh, Mr. Uh, Gaba Shehu, about how you've been tweeting and how you've been disseminating information. I'm wondering your reaction uh, to what people are saying. You know, young, young people can be very impatient. <laughs> uh, you don't blame them. They are young. We are not so young. We are in middle, middle age. So we are more contemplative than them. We can't. We speak for a president. We, we, don't, we, don't, we can't talk carelessly. We can't talk recklessly. We can talk without weighing what they're going to say. Because... In that process, we may misrepresent your principle. So I would just like to say to the people online, Twitter, and all that, old and young, patience. Like the saying goes, easy does it. They stumble, they run too fast. Easy does it. I see. So we understand that, but just keep in mind, he's also president of this young people as well, though. <laughs> I tell you that in about the week maximum two, there is going to be a special assistant who is going to be in charge of online. He will engage more with these young people. Okay, so we should expect more online interactions. Um, oh, sure. I mean, before sure. this interview, just so you know, I went on your Twitter page and I noticed that the last time you sent out a tweet was June 23rd. Uh, so uh, no, so don't, you are telling us that there would be... Okay, June 23rd, yes, possible, yes. Say that again? Yes, yes, yeah, you, you may be quite right. Uh, it was June 23rd, must have been. Okay, yeah, this week is this week, yes. Yeah. So, but yeah. in terms of disseminating information, letting us know what Mr. President is up to, uh, what uh, are some changes we yeah, should expect? You, 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 know, you know, it is not all the information at my disposal that I can make available. It is not everything Mr. President says to me, for instance, that I quickly go and tweet. No, no. There are some meant for private consumption. There are some meant for my information. There are some just meant for me so that I can know how his mind is working. Mm. I should be able to design what to release to the public mm -hmm. and what is meant for my private consumption. I so see. even when, they, when, when a special assistant on online resumes, it is the things we pass to him that still passes online. Yeah. The information has to be sifted. You don't, you don't, you don't put everything out. Yeah. And it's like that is what the old people online want. Everything, everything, every minute. No, it doesn't work. <laughs> and you are not the it's, social media <laughs> advisor, right? So there would be somebody working solely on social media, right? Oh yes, yeah, so working under my office, responsible to me. 
a number of special assistants are coming in. Okay. So and my, my, my last question for you, though, recently that there was some kind of fiasco about Mr. President, whether he said his uh, age would affect his performance or he didn't really mean it like that. And you actually said that he's uh, like old wine, that the yeah. older you get, the tastier uh, you you become or something yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Okay, so do you just mind, do you mind clearing clearing uh, exactly what Mr. President was trying to say and what you were trying to say with that proverb. You know Mr. President was in, in uh, South Africa and we went to the Nigerian consulate in Johannesburg. And he, he had a prepared text that he should have read, but he put it aside. He said he wanted to talk straight from the heart. And he began to talk to the people. And he told them that at 33, he was governor of the North East State. North East State today has had six states carved out of it. He listed the states, uh, Bono, Yobe, Adamawa, uh, Gombe, Taraba, and all those six states. He listed them. And then he said at 42, he became head of state. And now at 72, he is now president. He wished that he had been president when he became a governor. That was 33. That means he will have done a lot more for Nigeria, a lot more, because he will have the advantage of youth, the advantage of speed, the advantage of energy, and all that. It does not mean that his, tre um, his trend has diminished, but you can also say that he's, he's, he's a youth again. He just said he wished he had become president at that age. Then he would have done a lot more for Nigeria. But that does not mean he is saying that he can do now. He can do, he will do, and he is doing. Okay. You need to see the work rate of Mr. Yeah, I, I guess he that's what Nigerians hard. want to hear, that he will still do. It's just, no, no. he will still uh, he, do. Even if you look at the remarks, if mm -hmm. you look at the remarks in, in that same in the event in Johannesburg, he still went on to itemize what he will do. Mm -hmm. They will battle corruption, they will, they, will, they, will, they will create employment, the economy will be revived. He went on to say it in that same event. Okay. So that, that sentence that he wished he, he had become president at 33 and not 72 should not have been taken out of isolation. I see. And you were trying to explain the proverb, right? Yes, yes, yes. Now, uh, the, a statement was issued on that. I see. All right. Um, so thank you very much, uh, Mr. Femi Adishino, for joining us. We really appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, viewers, that has been the special advisor on media and publicity to President Muhammadu Buhari, Mr. Femi Adishino. We hope you've enjoyed this interview. Stay tuned. We have much more to come.